I want to talk about the Flexner Report released in 1910 that was created by Abraham Flexner mm-hmm. and funded by the Carnegie Foundation and its negative impact on holistic health and how it birthed Big Pharma. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, there is a man by the name of John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller was born in upstate New York. Uh, he moved to Ohio when I believe he was seven. Now, I, I need you to keep in mind that these are Germans. They're from Germany. They're from Germany. Now they call themselves Jews. These are German converts that converted themselves from German to Judaism. So they really Germans. Now, John D. Rockefeller, he moved to Ohio. Uh, he grew up as a bookkeeper. Uh, his father, his father actually used to be a pharmaceutical seller. He would go around with herbs and act like he was healing all these diseases when he wouldn't. That's what his father, ironically, he started doing the same thing. But his father was a, a tradesman. He was a maintenance man and he used to travel often. And he traveled, he used to do magic tricks and he also used to sell herbs. And he even called himself the, uh, he called himself the cancer healer or the healer of all times. He literally coined himself that. He never had a degree. He never studied medicine. He never studied diseases, but that was one of his tricks. So he was traveling while he was traveling, John D. Rockefeller, which came the most, the, the, till this day, one of the wealthiest men in history. Uh, he used to basically sell turkeys. He used to cut his, his uh, neighbor's yards and stuff like that. He was your everyday hustler. Well, at the age of 17, he ended up getting him a job as a bookkeeper because he was very good with money and counting. So uh, he ended up getting a job as a bookkeeper and he worked at this bookkeeping firm uh, making money for them. And after two years, he asked him for a raise and they didn't give him the raise. Well, when you're doing bookkeeping, you build a lot of relationships with millionaires. So what he did was he went to all the relationships he built and he asked them for four thousand dollars. So they gave him a four thousand dollar loan. With this $4,000, John D. Rockefeller ended up getting into the stock market and he started trading animals. He was trading hay. He was trading uh, trading tires, herbal botanicals and stuff like that. Around this same time, uh, oil, the oil, big oil industry started getting very, very big. So he in Ohio at this time and he started seeing a lot of oil companies emerge. So he wanted to get into it. So he tried to get into it, but failed miserably. And the reason why is because he didn't know how to find and source his own herbs. So he came up with a brilliant idea to refine oil. So he would take oil. And let me show you why I'm saying this, because it's what he did with, his, with the whole industry, even the pharmaceuticals. So he found out how to go to oil companies, take that oil, refine that oil and resell it lower than the actual oil companies. This is how he started making his first millions. Not only that, he hired 16 biochemists. And what these biochemists was to do is with the refined oil, they were supposed to make byproducts from the oil. Uh, things like Vaseline. We everybody uses, especially black people, they use it on their lips. That's actually petroleum oil, a uh, tar that they use for street pavement. That's actually petroleum oil. A lot of the different medical uh, sterilizations that come from petroleum oil. A lot of the stuff that we use right now until this very day are byproducts of petroleum oil. So John D. Rockefeller, he figured out how to take something natural, break it down and utilize it and resell it. But he was left with all these different byproducts that he couldn't do nothing with. So he came up with an evil idea to take the waste of these products and create other products and sell them on the market and drive the, the, the profit margin up 200 percent. So this created him a billionaire. At this same time, Cornegy. The Cornegy family, William Cornegy and them, they was actually funding the railroad industry. So what he did was he said, I need to connect with the Cornegy Foundation and family because now I can make this thing worldwide because it's railroads. So he ended up connecting with the Cornegy family and they created this fund release program. Through this fund release program, meanwhile, in Germany, they creating pharmaceutical drugs. The pharmaceutical drug company actually come from something called the Azo Dye Company. And this is how shirts are pink, red, blue. This come from Germany. It was a bunch of bio, Germans are natural biochemists. They're some of the smartest people in the world. I ain't gonna, I'll, I'll give them that. They very smart because they know how to mix and create chemical outcomes. So they was creating all types of Azo Dye Companies. Uh, most of them Azo Dye Companies, it became very saturated in the market. So what they would, what they did was they said, we're not going to make azo dye no more. They was making furniture colors out of azo dyes. They was making car paint out of azo dyes. They was making different miscellaneous products to, you know, give different shirts, different colors out of azo dyes. So they seen how lucrative it was. So it became very saturated in the market in Germany. So one company, 
they decided to break off and create their first pharmaceutical, synthetic pharmaceutical company. So what they did was they took natural herbs and they mixed them with azo dye chemicals. See that? You still see it today. Have you ever seen red pills, blue pills? You got to ask yourself what colors are those? Them are chemicals created from German. Aspirin, Bayer's, all these are big German companies that are operating in America. But anyways, it started booming in Germany. Remind you, John D. Rockefeller is a German. So he called home. All his family still there. Only his intermediate family moved to the Americas. So he got all these millions, all these billions, and he created the world first, first monopoly, which means he had he had so much money that he was going to crash the economy to the point where I think it was in 1911. I believe in 1911, the actual federal government created something called an antitrust fund to break up and dissemble his companies because he was taking money from everybody. He had so much money, he was dictating who was going to be in office or not. The government like, we can't have that no more. He's too powerful. So they broke, bro broke up his companies into small shell companies thinking that it was going to take the money from him, but it didn't. But a lot of the politics started looking at him bad. So he like, man, look, this oil got me being looked at as bad. You know, I'm going to become a philanthropist. I'm going to start giving away a bunch of money. I'm going to get into charity and I'm going to get into healing. So what he did was he came up with an idea because he's seen all the companies in Germany creating pharmaceutical companies and how lucrative it was. He said, I'm going to back up out of oil. I'm going to stay chairman over these, but I'm going to back up as the owner. I'm going to own nothing and control everything, and I'm going to move into pharmaceutical drugs. So those same 16 scientists that he had making byproducts of oil and creating Vaseline and tar and all these other things, uh, and gum, gum come from that too. When you chew on gum, you're chewing tar and petroleum oil. Facts. Look it up. So he said, he said, hey, 16 biochemists, let's see how we can take this oil because I got trillions and trillions and trillions of tons of it and how we can merge this with botanicals and create synthetic drugs. So he took them underground and man, they realized how to use actual herbs and botanical and to merge them with oils. At this time, it was still booming though. You got the, uh, the chiropractor industry was just coming out booming, making millions and millions of dollars. You got the homopathy industry coming out. They were more into natural herbs, making millions and millions of dollars. And then not alone, you got moms and pops growing their own herbs in their backyard. So natural healing was at an all time high. So he had to figure out a way to dismantle them. So this is what he did. He, he went, he said, he went to the Corner G family and he said, hey, let's create a pot. And with this pot, we're going to fund the actual education system. We're going to give them new books. We're going to build them new schools and all of that. And he was like, what well, Carnegie was like, well, we got to talk to somebody that's over the education uh, board and over the medical colleges. So they went to a brother, uh, not a brother. They went to another man that was over uh, the, the AMA at the time. And this is a journal that basically speaks about regulating the medical field. So they get him on the team. And once they got him on the team, they said, look, we're going to fund you to push a narrative. So they gave him trillions of dollars. And what he did was he said, in order for this to work, though, I need to put somebody on my board, on my seat at the, at the chairman of your table. And he said, all right, I, you can give me the money and you can put anybody that you want to put on there. Guess what we put on? He put on his his brother his, was Flexner. Flexner had a, another brother called Abraham. Flexner said, I only, I'm only going to do it if Abraham get on board. And if you look at their background, they was trying to create schools for the, the last 15 years of their lives, but they kept failing. They kept failing. So he said, this is the way to get on. We got the money. We got the power. We got the people. We can influence through promotion and everything. So what they did was Abraham Flexner and the Carnegie and the Rockefeller Foundation went to every different school and offered to give them money. But it came with a price. In order for me to give you money, you have to you have to basically pass a certain test. And this test is how long you've been in school to call yourself a doctor. So they they said, look, so he did his whole report. He said, I feel that, you know, they are getting a doctors in five years. I think that's too short. We got to make it nine. You see that? That's why it takes so long to get your doctors now. I feel like the education system is not right. They're teaching the children wrong about education. They're still teaching about formal. Uh, they're still teaching about naturopathy. We want to start pushing petroleum back pharmaceutical drugs. Anybody that's not teaching those, we're going to discredit their schools. So they went around and started discrediting schools. And for those who changed their ways and went into medicine, 
in selling back petroleum back medicines, they gave them millions of dollars. They gave them books, they rebuilt their schools, and they gave them creditations. The ones that said they're gonna stick to your basic running gun healing, healing from earth, getting your herbs from the earth, they discredited them and they didn't give them no money. So now you got schools all around the world that's looking pretty that they, they got books, they got better curriculum, they got better uh, equipment, and then you got schools that's really healing that look ran down. Man, within five years, all the schools that wasn't receiving money, they drove themselves out of business. Some of them actually got with the program, but most of them was driven themselves out of business because they didn't have no money. So once that worked, all of the healing schools is out. So remember, he's still funding the AMA. The AMA now, since there's so much money behind them, they on every single newspaper. They on every broadcast right now. So now they word is becoming golden. So now they're putting out this narrative that if you are selling herbs, you don't know what you're talking about because it's this new invention, petroleum back pharmaceuticals is really suppressing disease and healing people of all the ailments. So what he did was they had so much money in politics and power that they was actually heard by the federal court. That was heard by the federal court to the point that you can't even sue these people for real. You can sue little doctors, but you can't sue John D. Rockefeller and them because they, all their money is stuck up in the trust. And you can't penetrate a foreign trust. Remember, they from Germany. His trust is out of Germany. Man, man, these dudes are smart. Evil, but smart. So, man, so check this out. They got all the schools shut down. So at this same point, get, at this same point that they get in the school shut down, they say, we need a new curriculum. We got all the medical schools. So now if you look, like, for instance, uh, in Atlanta right now, you have something called Spelman College. You know who Spelman is, right? That's John D. Rockefeller wife. Her last name is Spelman. Her last name is Spelman. That's the man's wife? That's his wife. The Look, of Spelman down south? Man, well, Google it right now. Google who spell. Who, Go look this up real quick. Check this out. Mrs. Laura. Spelman Rockefeller. Ooh. Uh, 1894 name changes to Spelman Seminary in honor of Miss Laura Spelman. Rockefeller. Let's not talk about Morehouse. Let's not talk about look all these medical colleges. Go look. You think it goes back to somebody that's black? They don't. All these medical colleges go back to subsidiary and, and, and basically names or middle names or third grand. These are named that all these different medical colleges is named after John D. Rockefeller family. And you can trace them back just like you can trace back all the presidents to come from one entity, come from one bloodline. You can do the same thing with every medical college. Now, within the last 20 years, it's a bunch of new medical colleges that came up outside of that, which still follow the curriculum, but don't have their name. But when you start studying these names, man, they go back to John D. Rockefeller family, man. They go back to his family names. He owned these schools. That's why if you go and, and you teach against them, you can get locked up and persecuted because he sits at the head of the federal directors in the federal Supreme Court. John D. Rockefeller, man, he controlled the damn world. Man, him and the corner G's. Man, so look, let me show you how they did this though. So they get that, so now they start passing laws. These are people that's not into politics. These are people that don't have no doctrines and medicines, but they have enough money to influence because now you got enough money. You can put people in office. You can put certain governments in office. You can create the FBI. Guess who funded the creation of the FBI? Rocket, Rockefeller did. He funded that. That's why it's an agency. He funded that agency. The FBI would not be the FBI without the Rockefeller Foundation family. He funded it. So what he did was he said, look, we're going to put money into the government system. We're going to put money into the school uh, system. Let's create something called the School Education Board. I think it was in 1911. He created the Educational School Board. So everything that you learn from kindergarten all the way into college is actually the Flexner Report. Flexner, Cornegy, and the Rockefeller family came together with a bunch of scientists and a bunch of psycholo uh, psychologists, and they said, we're going to create education. So whenever you learn anything in a public school system, you are being taught. You sitting on John D. Rockefeller lap. You acting like he your grandpa and he giving you game on how he wants you to be ran. Now, check this out. This is his famous quote. He said, I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of what? Workers. So you go to school to become a worker. Who are you working for? The pharmaceutical companies. And so look, now remember, they broke up his companies, right? When they did the antitrust uh, law against him to make him come work for them. And it worked because he started funding them and putting them in office and stuff. Shell's company, guess who own that? Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Proper and Gamble, guess who own that? Rockefeller. You know what Bro Proper and Gamble sells? They sell your tomatoes. They sell all your food. 
It sells all your food. Most of your most of your your cereal companies like Fruit Loop and them. Guess who's the back owner of them? Rockefeller. But you see, cereals is one of the number one cause, cancer causing agents to children. You know what I'm saying? The milk and farm industry. Guess who owned the most land in America? The Rockefeller and the Corner G Foundation. All the foods we eating owned by them. What about your toothpaste that got fluoride in it? Guess who owned most of your toothpaste? Rockefeller. What about the soaps and the shampoos you put in your body that causes you all these types of cancer? Guess who owned it? Rockefeller. Let's talk about the perms. The perms, which causes brain cancer. Guess who owned these things? These are all back. Well, let me not, let me not say owned, but when you dig and you find who funded these companies, guess who funded all these companies? The Rockefeller Cornegy Foundation. So they had so much money and they, chari they gave away charity to so many different people, but it was all for the purpose to actually create the educational school board and to penetrate the colleges. That way you went to school to teach pharmacology and that way a doctor, when a doctor see a symptom, he automatically, he don't teach you how to heal, he teach you how to suppress that symptom and he always have to give you what? A prescription to a medicine. And this medicine, they get a percentage off of everything they sell. You know what I found wild, man, is that they don't teach doctors about nutrition. Because it's being I a doctor. I understand why, but I'm just saying. Because you like, realize all wild, doctor like. just means teacher. That's all it means. So you can have a doctrine in anything. You can be a philosopher and be called doctor because you're a teacher of philosophy. So they're a teacher of pharmaceutical drugs. They're here to prescribe you a drug. And every time that they prescribe you a drug, the money go back to the Corner G and the Rockefeller and the JP Morgan Bank Foundation. Because banking, bankers, is who created the pharmaceutical industry. D. Rockefeller and the General Education Board encouraged vocational education during the years of 1880 to 1925. So See? They created the, they didn't only create the educational school board. They created the medical board. They created and revamped all of your colleges. So if you go to any school in America and in Germany, you are learning the mindset of John D. Rockefeller and how to serve his family forever. John D. Rockefeller and his family, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the DuPonts, all of these different people, the Kissingers, these are all the bloodline. These are the same people. They just changed their names. They're actually from German and then they converted over to Judaism. So they tell you that they're the Jews, but they really are Germans and they are soul capturers. You, if, until you get out the matrix, you're going to be serving them for lifetimes until you understand who these people are. And these people trace back into the Knights Templars and they trace back into the Phoenician foundations all the way in Africa. These are ancient bloodlines of people and to my knowledge, not to sound like spookism, they're not they're not even humanoids. And these this is the truth, man. These people were born into power, man. That's a fact. So that's the story of the pharmaceutical drug industry.